Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming in a little bit of a new <laughs> spot as you can see. I'm actually pet sitting for a friend right now. They said it was okay if I vlogged. So here I am. We are pet sitting and I'm going to be reviewing and reading three different popular thrillers this weekend. I'm super excited. So I picked three different popular thriller authors. I'm going to go through them really quick and then throughout the day I'm going to give you different reviews. I'm kind of doing a big readathon day. The first book is the only one where I've read anything by the author. The other two are both new authors to me but this one is The Silent Patient by Alex McLeides. I recently read The Maidens and I really liked it. I gave it like a four star rating. It was super entertaining. I read it in under 24 hours. I couldn't put it down. It was just really interesting. There, I mean there are a few things about the writing that I didn't love but overall very entertaining thriller fun. I liked the Greek references. Apparently there's a lot of Greek references in this as well so I'm excited for this. And essentially the premise of this is that our main character's name, he is uh, Theo Faber, and he is a criminal psychotherapist. And he is kind of uh, learning about our main kind of, he, it's like told from his point of view, but the main character is kind of a woman named Alicia who is the silent patient that the book is named after. And essentially she is an artist who ended up murdering her husband. And that in and of itself is, you know, kind of interesting because they had an alleged, like, really happy marriage. So that's kind of interesting in itself, right? But ever since she murdered him, she has not spoken a word. So him being a criminal psychologist, he's just really interested in exactly why she, like, snapped and murdered her husband when they allegedly had, like, a good marriage. And then why she hasn't spoken a word since because it sounds like she's been convicted of the crime and she's been sent off to like a psychiatric ward for treatment and, and stuff and so he's just kind of like okay like why you know if this was an act like the silent thing like why would you continue being a silent you know she hasn't spoken i think it's like seven years later or something so this sounds interesting i i'm a little a little nervous about the setting i'm really hoping even though I'm assuming a lot of this book takes place within the psychiatric ward. I'm really hoping it's not going to be littered with like really bad stereotypes about like everyone in the book who is struggling with some kind of mental illness because that's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just not something I'm like okay with, you know, for like everyone hopefully isn't painted in a negative light. We'll see. We'll see. Um, this is his first novel. The Maidens was the second novel, so we're going to see how I like it. I'm hoping it's a strong read as well, and that is the first book. The next one is one that I have been so excited for because, one, I feel like there's a lot of hype about this author in general, but also Meg with books really loves this author. She's read a couple of her novels and, like, I think given them all five stars or, like, strong ratings at least. So I'm very, very excited because she's one of my favorite booktubers. Um, I actually just recently where I, I filmed a video reviewing a couple of my favorite booktubers, like favorite mystery or thriller books, and I did include Meg in that, and I also read The Maidens in that for a different YouTuber. So if you want to check that out, I will link it above for you. But that author is Ruth Ware, so she is pretty widely talked about on YouTube, and you can see why, because this is New York Times best-selling author, but on the back... I mean, there are people calling her the Agatha Christie of our generation or the true heir to Wilkie Collins. And I mean, that to be called like the Agatha Christie of your generation, I mean, that's like, that's like the highest praise I think you could really give like a mystery thriller writer, in my opinion, anyways. But she has sold over 4 million copies and she's. Uh, the author of five instant New York Times bestsellers. If you're familiar with her work, she's also written The Woman in Cabin 10, The Lion Game, The Turn of the Key. I know I, th I saw a lot on YouTube, um, but I picked this one because One by One and The Woman in Cabin 10 were the most interesting summary-wise, and I thought this one was kind of a fun, more like fall-winter themed one. I recently did a fall TBR. I'll link that above too if you want to check it out. And these were on the list because especially this time of year I want like spooky, I want thrillers, I want suspense. And so this one essentially takes place in like a French ski chalet and you basically have these co-workers of this company called Snoop. Yeah, it's a trendy London-based tech startup and they are taking a retreat at this ski resort. They're the only ones there. It's like a small chalet that they've like rented out for the week to do skiing and like corporate presentations and all of that 
And so they arrive, you know, they start doing some skiing. However, one of them disappears. And shortly after that, they are snowed in and cut off from the world. So I love this already because I love an isolation trope mystery. Like, isolate the characters, make them sit together, and know one of them is like the murderer. I live for that trope. It's just... I recently read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, and that was just... Wow. Um, so this is kind of like has a little bit of a similar vibe with the one by one because apparently then after that first person, person disappears, people start to disappear or be murdered one by one and they don't know who's doing it. They're all trapped together. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, yeah, this is my first Ruth Ware and I've heard such good things in general for, about people saying things on YouTube about her and this general premise sounds absolutely amazing. So can't wait for that. And the last one was another popular thriller author. I think I found this on Gabby Reed's channel. Um, she had like a thriller recommendation video. I'll link it down below if I, if I find the specific video. But this one she said was kind of like Lucy Foley's The Paris Apartment, which I read a couple months ago, I think for June, and I really enjoyed it. That was my second Lucy Foley thriller, and it was just really fun and all took place basically in this one apartment and there was lots of secrets and you know scandals between the different residents and stuff so when she said this was kind of you know a similar setting and like if you like the Paris apartment you might like this book I was like I'm here I'm there um so this is written by Riley Sager and it's called Lock Every Door so a lot of people talk about this author on YouTube I've heard some really good things and this just seems to be kind of in the same vein as like Lucy Foley and some other authors I enjoy for thrillers. So I'm excited to read this. The premise of this is our main character, Jules, is hired on as an apartment sitter at this luxury apartment called the Bartholomew, which I think overlooks like Central Park. It's like very, I mean, very ritzy. Like we're talking like multi-millionaires, celebrities, like very, very wealthy people living there. However, they have a lot of strict and strange rules that she has to follow while she's apartment sitting because I think, I feel like the apartment sitting is because she has like, she's got to like fill the residency until like the lease is up or something. So they're paying her to sit. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't read it yet, but that's the general like kind of vibe that I'm getting from this. And basically she's hired on. However, she, you know, she's noticing some strange things there's some kind of weird rules about apartment sitting there and she meets one of the other apartment sitters on a different floor and they kind of hit it off i think they were hanging out when that person disappears like in the middle of the night with not a trace like she just disappears and uh, our main character jules is like okay really weird so she kind of starts to look into her friend's disappearance because she's concerned and i think there's some interesting like tie-ins maybe with like her past family like tragedies and stuff if i remember correctly so i'm really interested in this again this isn't like a full-on isolation trope mystery because you know she can I, as far as i know she can walk out of the apartment you know but there is like kind of that isolated setting where you know it's probably someone on the premises of the apartment just because of the location and stuff of the disappearance so i'm really excited for this this i love this cover it's very um just stark like i really enjoy that um the look of this i feel like it's really fun and i noticed um, i'm covering up my library with these sticky notes just because it has my town's name but i noticed underneath here that ruth ware actually has written a little blurb on the top here so i'm hoping that that means you know if i like one of these i like the other because she's recommending this author so you know hopefully hopefully we'll see we're gonna see so anyways today i'm gonna take you along with me and we are going to just enjoy ourselves, do some reading. I'm gonna give you reviews of each of these. Very, very excited for that. But first, we gotta say hi to our most important guest here. Come on, puppy. Wanna say hi? Come on. <laughs> this is Nicole. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> don't drop it. Yes. She's a Boston Terrier and she's beautiful. So that is the puppy we will be pet sitting. I'll probably show a couple little clips of her. Okay, so we just finished Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. This was such a fun thriller. I just sat on the couch and was just there for like three hours. Like I just didn't move basically. I was just sitting there flipping this like through it as fast as I could, tearing through it because I wanted to know how and why and what and you know all of that this was such a fun read and the bartholomew is absolutely 
a creepy, disturbing, freaky setting. You wouldn't think an apartment building would be that scary, you know, like not compared to like a ski chalet that everyone's like isolated in, but oh, it was scary. <laughs> it was scary. Um, the ending to this, I get, again, I won't give any spoilers in this, but the ending was intense. It was so intense. Um, I liked our main character. You know, I thought she had, you know, she had her flaws, but she also was a really persistent, loyal person who was really going after finding out what happened to the other apartment sitter, Ingrid. And I just, I really enjoyed this. This was good. It was so creepy. The setting and the way it was described was beautiful. It was just you could picture every room and everything so clearly like it, it just had really good pacing like I felt like there was never a dull moment I was constantly just going and going and going and wanting to know what was next and learning a little bit more and like you know carrot carrot dangling in front of you basically and I was highly entertained this was great this was a fantastic start to this five stars I will definitely be checking out more by Riley Sager I just put a, a hold at my library on I think it's like the house across the lake and I have to say they did their research because the some of the things about the area and the location and how they like set up the history of the apartment building was just fantastic writing fantastic research like you could tell they really put a lot of thought into this and oh I'm so creeped out I'm, I'm <laughs> it's I'm I'm thrilled I'm really glad I finished this like earlier in the day and not before bed because I honestly might have just sat there like going over this in my head over I probably still will but like having it fresh in my brain before bed probably wouldn't have been the best idea so I'm glad I finished this earlier in the day and yeah this was a fantastic read five stars from Riley Sager I loved this I'm excited to read more by this author and if you enjoy you know, if you enjoyed the plot summary for this, if you like Lucy Foley, if you like the Paris apartment, I think you'd really like this because they're definitely, the books are different of course, but like the setting and the intensity and everything was there. The biggest difference I would say is that with Lucy Foley, her books, at least the ones I've read so far, have been from multiple points of view. This one just followed Jules, which I have to say I really like. I like the multiple point of views. I feel like Lucy Foley does a good job with that, which, is saying something because it's not my favorite to have multiple points of views but I do like just following one person I feel like it gives the most suspense in a lot of ways because you're just you only know what they know you're limited and I like that so yeah I liked this I thought Jules was a, a really great character I thought they tied in some interesting tidbits from her past and like kind of showed why she responded in certain ways which I liked. I feel like it gave her more depth as a character and the plot was excellent. Loved it. Loved it. This was great. I would highly recommend. Okay guys, it's a little bit later in the day now and we have hit a DNF. I, I can't. I, can't. I, I have gotten about 150 pages into this book but I can't do it. Like I really can't and like I kind of want to know what happens but not enough to look over the just red flags that I'm seeing that I'm not enjoying that's making the book not enjoyable to read so that is The Silent Patient by Alex Michelides which is really interesting because I liked The Maidens a lot so it's very interesting to me to have a four star by this author and then a DNF that's because that's a, that's a you know that's a stark difference and I know this was his first but it did sell millions, so clearly it was, you know, pretty well liked at least, or a good seller at least. Alright, so basically why I'm DNFing this, um, wow, where to start? One, what I was concerned about in the intro about the mental, uh, pe people in the mental ward being like really negatively discussed, it really it was just really bad stereotypes like it um basically anyone who was mentally ill in this book that was their personality and that's that's not a personality trait that that isn't um that that is someone who's suffering with an illness and you know if someone had diabetes you wouldn't consider that a personality trait and i don't think it's acceptable for that to be a personality trait like to be treated as such where that's like their whole identity as a character even and I'm talking about also, you know, the other patients at the ward besides just Alicia, who is the 
the artist who murdered her husband. But even Alicia, who the book is named after because she's the silent patient, and this is this is the woman that the main, like the, the guy we're reading this, his perspective, Theo, he's obsessed with her in like a really, really creepy way. Like it's really strange. Um, He's obsessed with her and I know nothing about Alicia outside the fact that Theo and a bunch of other men think she's really attractive, that she's obsessed with her husband and killed him, and that she's mentally ill. That is like, and that she's an artist, which would be a great thing to like talk a little bit more about, but it's really just said that she's a pretty, like she's a good artist and that's kind of, that's what it's left at. Um, so for the, like the title character of this book, to literally be the like least fleshed out person ever. I mean, I know nothing about her personality. And I, I realize that's a little hard because she is silent. You know, up until this point that I've read, she hasn't spoken. Um, maybe she does later on. There are like diary entries of hers that are included. So you think her personality would kind of come out in that? I know nothing about her and and Theo is going around and talking to like her family and like it's really weird like she doesn't have an open case I find it to be really inappropriate um, I, I I know it's fiction like I, I understand it's fiction but he's taking a lot of liberties I think it's just a really weird setup um, and I, I just can't get over the way that he's writing kind of about women in general like I noticed it a little bit with the maidens but the main character did have more personality I don't think she was like the best female character I've ever written or read by any means but she did have more personality like I could name things about her like you know she's clueless about this she's not very good about this she this is like her flaws this is like where she's you know good at this is why she's passionate about being a therapist you know that sort of thing but like this I can't tell you anything about why Alicia loves art or you know I, I you know other than the fact that she was in like like I'm basically at the same point uh the, of like everything I knew about Alicia that was presented in the summary basically other than the fact that apparently every man wants her that's pretty much all I've gotten um is that she murdered her husband even though they had an alleged happy marriage and she's mentally ill and an artist that's that's literally all I've learned, um, which is all in the summary. So I've learned like nothing about her. And this book is just dragging for me, which, you know, certain genres, I have more patience to get through slow bits. But when it's a thriller, I want this to be page turning. Like I want to be completely enveloped and like page turn. I can't. The Maidens, I was obsessed. I was sitting there like page turning, page turning, like taking very minimal breaks just to eat. And that was it. But this, I, I can't get through. Okay, I will admit, I don't normally do this if I DNF a book, but I did want to know how this ended just because I was like, maybe there's something redeemable about how it ends. And I'm not going to spoil anything. But the way this ends, I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> um, I feel like this would be a very love it or hate it kind of ending, uh, depending on your, your taste in general, but it doesn't appear like from what I read in the summary of how it ends that this really redeems itself for my critiques. So I'm glad I DNF'd this because the other thrillers I'm reading right now for this vlog are doing much better for me. I'm enjoying them a lot more and I just, I can't get over like how net, like just nobody had any personality in this book. Like it was so strange and I know thrillers are sometimes a lot more plot driven than like other types of mysteries that I enjoy but I mean I didn't feel like the plot was driving hard that home either like I was kind of bored with the plot and I wasn't getting any interest from the characters either so I just was like this isn't for me so this is a one star because it's a DNF. Do you want the bark box? Yeah? Let's see what's in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there. Wow. What is that? Do you want a rumble ring with pumpkin and cinnamon? And a jack o loop? See it? Good see it. Big girl. Alright, look at that. <laughs> and. 
Oui. Got everything out of there. We have a sea of roses behind me with the wallpaper here, and we're doing a check in and review of our last thriller, which I really flew through, and I'm so relieved because after the silent patient, I was like, what if I get like two out of three duds here, and what if I end on a negative note? I hate ending on a negative note. I mean, I will if I don't like the book, of course, but we are happy to say that. Ruth Ware saved the day. This was a really solid read. I'd give it like a strong four stars. It was just four, four and a half. Like it was really good. I liked it. I'm, I would say that out of the books I read today, the one by Riley Sager was my favorite. That one was just the easiest to fly through. It was just really entertaining. Like it was just like there was never a slow moment with it, which is exactly what I want with a thriller. And then obviously The Silent Patient didn't go so well just because I had a variety of things that just really bothered me about the way people were presented and then just the lack of character depth in general like I feel like I didn't I just it wasn't there for me and just knowing how it ended now I'm like oh okay well I'm, I'm just didn't feel it you know but this book super enjoyable so one by one this has two points of views in it which i didn't know going in and i thought it was really well done it was easy to keep track of who was who the first few chapters a little confusing just because there were a lot of characters introduced all at once because you had the entire team from the company snoop all at once like entering so of course there's a lot of characters but the same was true with Lucy Foley when you know you had like the wedding party and like just a lot of people introduced at once but I quickly sorted it out after a few chapters. I feel like the multiple points of views like both characters were easy to follow along with. So the two points of view were from Aaron and Liz's point of view and so Aaron is one of the people who uh, is like the employee at the ski chalet. It's her and a man who kind of run the place together and then you have Liz who is one of the like employees or people coming like on the snoop retreat and she's kind of like an outcast you know she's not really she doesn't really want to be there like you get that from the first page so i'm excited for re like this i thought this was a great introduction to ruth Ware. i really want to read some of her other books now um it was definitely suspenseful the last like third or so of the book there were some characters that were very isolated together and my stomach was in knots because it was so suspenseful. I was just sitting there like on edge going, oh no, oh no, oh no. Like it was just like I was like sweating for these characters because I was so scared for them. So she did an excellent job with that. I thought everything was like well reasoned out. I felt like the motives and stuff, like, you know, I feel like things made sense. I felt like I had a good aha moment. It clicked. I didn't actually call it. I'm a little disappointed looking back. I was like, oh, you know, that makes, like it made sense. And I was like, why did I miss this? But I thought it was well written. I thought, again, I feel like she really was fantastic, which just built like a slow build of suspense. You had like that initial panic among everybody when they were snowed in um, and one person's missing. So you get like that initial hit of just like adrenaline and panic and we're trapped and oh my gosh. But then later, it just like this slow burn of like suspense just building and I was just sitting there like on edge like hunched over this book like no 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 like I <laughs> it was really good I feel like it had a good wrap up too which I enjoyed I, I like I like thrillers and mysteries that will have like the big reveal you know the big ending or whatnot but then have at least a few chapters to kind of tie it up what happens like because I want to know what happens to these characters later, like how does their life change, like what happens, and I feel like both with the, um, well I'm so, I'm blanking, the Riley Sager book and this book, I feel like they both had like good wrap ups, like I really feel satisfied with both the like climax and who did it and what happened and like all that stuff, but then also I feel satisfied knowing what happened to the remaining characters, like I'm, I, I liked that like I want to know that they're okay or they're healing or they've transformed in some way after this crazy experience you know that kind of a thing so I 
I really like this. I'm really excited to read more by Ruth Blair. This was a very entertaining read and just perfect for like fall and winter if you're looking for a seasonal thriller because I mean, oof, this set like shivers up my spine. There was a lot of like time in the snow and stuff and it was just oof, creepy. Um, really, really creepy, really thrilling. This was a fantastic reading day. I didn't know if I'd be able to get through all three. It kind of helped that I ended up DNFing The Silent Patient about 150 pages in because that saved me some reading there, but I started early and I, I got through all of it. I'm, pre I'm pretty tired now, but this was a satisfying reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know down below. Do you have any thriller authors or specific books that you would recommend? Have you read anything by these authors or these books in particular? I'd love to hear your thoughts and reviews down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I do upload mystery, thriller, cozy mystery videos every single week on my channel. I'm obsessed with like anything kind of in the mystery thriller genre. I love to know. I'm just a curious person, you know? I wanna know who and what and why, like, anything with that kind of a, a vein to it, I talk about my channel. So definitely hit subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on future content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Please let me know any thoughts you have on these books, authors, or recommendations, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.